must rise and see to my mistress. She has quite a full day ahead. Guests shall be arriving around noon for a picnic in the gardens, and the masquerade ball is to follow this evening, hosted by a wealthy couple. Everything in the kitchen is prepared, yet I think I shall make fresh lemonade and orange juice for the occasion as well. Is this? Seems like someone has slipped a note under my door. Dearest maid, I rose early this morning and shan't require your assistance in dressing. You will recall that my guests are to arrive at twelve. We shall take a walk through the gardens and settle near the old oak for luncheon. Please ensure the sandwiches and cakes are neatly packed. I have spoken highly of your reading skills to my company and they would be most pleased if you might regale us with some poetry. I will bring a book. You may take your meal beforehand and meet us at one. I hope the night was kinder to you. Then it was to me. The twinkle of stars never reached my eye. Morpheus is not an easy lover. Oh dear. Reading aloud? <laughs> Mistress, you flatter me too much. But how can I refuse? I don't want to disappoint. <laughs> Keeping busy will calm my nerves. To the kitchen, then. fresh juice for mistress and her guests. And now, to attend to my other duties before joining them in the garden. Good morning, ladies. I trust you are enjoying your luncheon. <laughs> Thank you kindly. But it is our cook whom you should thank, as she took great care with the sandwiches. I merely assisted and made the scones. I do hope they are to your liking. Tender enough? <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. Yes, mistress, of course. It is an honor to provide you all with a little entertainment whilst you enjoy your meal. Um, which book shall I read from? Ah, I don't know this one. 
Where would you like me to sit? Very well. Pardon, my lady? You did not know that a maid could read? Well, I am pleased to ease your mind. Yes, I can read and write as well. Though my family's means were modest, my parents were determined that I receive an education. Um, my mother cared for me and my sisters, and my father was a school teacher. Even though he had to travel quite far from our village to the city where we could not afford to live, he made a point of teaching us to read when he could find a moment of respite from his demanding work. Now, if I may, shall I begin? Very well. Any particular page? This one. <clears throat> Words to my love by René Vivien. You understand me. I am a middling creature, not good, not very bad, peaceable, a bit sly. I hate heavy perfumes or a sudden outcry, and grey I prize dearer than scarlet or ochre. I love the fading day, which bit by bit dies down. A fire the closed-in intimacy of a chamber, where the lamps, dimming their panes of yellow amber, redden the old bronze and tinge with blue the freestone. My eyes on the carpet, which is smoother than sand. Idly I evoke the shores of golden peas, where the brightness of lovely times long past still drifts. And yet in spite of this, I bear the sinner's brand. See, I am at the age when the virgin yields her hand to the man her weakness makes her seek out and dread, and I have not chosen a comrade for the road. Because you appeared at a place where the path turned. On the hills, the hyacinth was bleeding crimson. I, I beg your pardon, my lady? Oh, it is pronounced hyacinth. <laughs> I apologize for my mistake. Let me start again. Mm -hmm. Are you suggesting my father did a poor job of teaching me how to read? <laughs> well, I must admit, reading in my native tongue comes more naturally. Perhaps you would prefer I recite a French poem instead? No? And why might that be? Surely a lady of such education as yourself is well versed in the language of Molière, is she not? Impertinent! My lady, I meant only to tease. Please do not mistake my gentle jest for insolence. I... Mistress, what are you... Oh, no. Mistress is stepping to my defense, and the tension is rising. Ladies, I beg you, please do not escalate over such an unimportant matter. I, I apologize for causing offense. Oh, oh dear. My mistress's friend has insulted her taste in front of everyone. 
It's not the first time they've had disagreements, but I am horrified that my words have led to this argument. They are standing now and moving a bit further from the group. I can no longer hear them clearly. Our friend is stepping closer, her posture tense, full of spite. But Mistress is standing tall, as always, refusing to let her emotions show. But I know her well enough to see the subtle shift in her expression. Her response must have been cold, calculated. No doubt a remark to cut just as deep. Everyone is watching and murmuring amongst themselves. I should say something, shouldn't I? What can I possibly do? The friend. I don't need to hear her exact words to know she's speaking about me. Her gaze, sharp as a blade, cuts in my direction. Something about putting me in my place. Insinuating I've overstepped. Mistress stiffens. Her chin lifts just slightly. A sign she won't let it pass. Her reply must have been threatening. Something that reminds her friend just who she's dealing with. I know her too well to miss the way she's holding herself now. Calm, but unyielding. But I... I've caused this. And as much as Mistress defends me, I can't help but feel the weight of it all on my chest. My thoughtless words... My fiery temper have provoked a quarrel, and now I can only hope they resolve it before it goes too far. It seems the argument is reaching a close, as Mistress is walking back in our direction. A headache? Uh, of course, Miss. Let us return to the mansion at once, so I can appease your pain with some chamomile tea and a warm blanket. How is your head now? Is the pain easing at all? I hope the tea helps to soothe it. Chamomile always worked wonders for me when I needed to calm my nerves. It's still quite warm, so do sip it slowly. This should help you feel more comfortable. Do tell me if there's anything else you need. A cool compress for your head, or perhaps just some quiet company. Very well. I must apologize for the scene I caused. There was no need for you to place yourself in such a situation on my behalf. I was terribly anxious watching you quarrel. It was all my fault. I should never have provoked your friend. My behavior was uncouth and unworthy of you. Though I confess, I did intend to offend your friend. When she spoke ill of my father, who worked so hard to educate us, I let my temper get the better of me. I have spoken you of my temper before, this fiery side of mine, and I am deeply ashamed that it revealed itself in such an unseemly way today. Surely I must have disappointed you. You are not disappointed. You say you had long desired to confront her. Indeed, she does possess a sharp tongue and a rather brusque manner. She made a rude comment before I even began reading. And what exactly did she say, mistress? <sighs> you are too gracious. You will not repeat those insults for fear of offending me. However, I must say, I know all too well 
the words that some women whisper behind my back. It moves me that you came to my defense, though I feel responsible for what has come of it. How is your head? Oh. Here. A kiss on your forehead. This is what my mother would do whenever we had a small injury. She called it a magic kiss. Forgive me if that was too bold. I merely wish to offer you some comfort. The same way you did by taking my defense earlier. Do you still intend to attend the masquerade this evening? Oh, I imagine the gentleman will be most charmed to see you there. Especially with the beautiful gown you have planned on wearing. You will no doubt impress them. Take care of yourself, miss. And enjoy the celebrations. I shall see you later to help you get ready. might not suffice. But it seems I blend rather well with the other ladies. <laughs> they all look so elegant. How foolish of me. Perhaps I should retreat before anyone recognizes me. Though I must admit, the thought of staying, of forgetting my circumstances for just one evening, With this mask upon my face, I should be safe enough from prying eyes. Oh, pardon me, sir. I did not mean to bump into you. A dance? Uh, it's very kind of you, but I am um, awaiting someone. I do appreciate your offer nonetheless. Now, where could my mistress be? It is quite the challenge to spot her amidst so many masked guests. Although, I believe I recognize her posture just there by the fireplace. And her beautiful gown. Even beneath the mask, her manner is unmistakable. She carries herself with such confidence. As though the entire room bends to her will. And I recognized the butterfly pin I secured in her hair while assisting her in getting ready. She stands so composed, as though what happened today were nothing more than a passing inconvenience. Typical of her to appear so unaffected by it all. She is speaking with a gentleman. He seems beguiled by her beauty. She does look ravishing in her gown. Should I go to her now? Oh, but what if she's displeased to see me here among such wealthy company? But with the mask hiding my identity, perhaps I can pretend, if only for a short while, that I belong in this world. <laughs> she has turned this way. Those eyes. Even through the mask, they hold a gaze that seems to know me at once. Has she recognized me? I can't tell. Should I smile or curtsy? No. Stay calm. You are simply another guest. Nothing more. I wonder if she has noticed me. She is walking in my direction. She approaches me with a smile, her mask glinting in the soft candlelight. I cannot speak. My accent may betray me. But if I remain silent, she might think me rude or aloof. She is making remarks about the gentleman. Amused comments. 
comments on their ridiculous masks and over-the-top costumes. It's so like her to find humor in everything. Her expression is playful as she makes a light-hearted observation about one particular gentleman tripping over his own feet. <laughs> oh, but what am I to do? I wish to engage her, to laugh with her. A nod and a smile should suffice to show my interest. She has such an enchanting presence, and I can't help but admire the elegance with which she carries herself. If only I could be as confident, to charm her with my words and wit. <laughs> she leans closer, asking me a question. What shall I say? I have dragged this on long enough. I must excuse myself at once and avoid this conversation. There is the door to the garden. Perhaps I could hide behind some trees. Oh no! She's pursuing me, imploring me to wait. I cannot escape this. Good evening, mistress. Yes, it is I beneath this mask, your humble maid. What? Why do you laugh? Are you mocking me, mistress? Pray, what is so amusing about this situation? <laughs> well, I am... Relieved that you find humor in the matter. I feared you might be angry or disappointed if you should find me here. Well, I'm not supposed to be here. Me, plain old me. I don't belong. Very well, I shall concede that I am not old. Plain, however. You shall not convince me otherwise. You are pleased to see me? My dress. Oh, it is but an old thing I still possess from my mother. Nothing extravagant, but uh, perhaps the most elegant gown I own. Thank you. I appreciate your kindness. What am I doing here? <laughs> that is indeed a good question. I suppose I was tempted to catch a glimpse of your world, to feel just for a moment as though I might belong. It is rather silly, truly. Just a young girl's dream I wish to fulfill. Did you notice something strange? Flustered? You thought I seemed flustered? <laughs> Is that how most people behave in your presence, mistress? <laughs> it appears the tables have turned, and now you are the one who seems flustered. I can see right through this mask of yours, my dear. <laughs> I... I ought to return home. I should not have indulged. I should have known my place. We have been through this before. And I shall have you know that your thoughtful notes, the poems you sleep beneath my door, the looks you bestow upon me, have not helped my resolve at all. you have managed to charm me. And now, I feel as though I am bewitched. Your voice is like honey to my ears, and the echoes of your laughter keep me smiling foolishly throughout the night. You told me you could not sleep last night. 
Well, for me, it isn't merely last night. It is every night. Malpheus may be a poor lover to you, but he has wholly forsaken me. And whenever I finally find solace in slumber, it is of you I dream. You fill my days and haunt my nights. How am I to endure this? Knowing that someday one of these gentlemen will capture your heart. And I shall have to call him sir. And assist in preparing for your wedding and... Your hand is very warm. Mine is not. Yes, I can feel the difference. What does this mean? Your fingers intertwining with mine? Are you not afraid someone might see us? What are you trying to say? captured by a gentleman. How can you be so sure? Oh, so that poem you had me read earlier, it was about you and me. I am the reason you cannot this mean? You feel the same way as I do? But what of my status? My lack of education? Of means? I have little to offer. How could you possibly regard me in such a light? I am more too aware of my place in this world. I am meant to sell. It is a bold notion to seek affection in the arms of a maid, to find joy in someone of such humble standing. What would your peers say? What would the ladies in your circle think? They would never accept such a thing. The whispers, the judgment. They would see us as scandalous, perhaps even immoral. if I do not. It is easier for me, my dear. I have nothing to lose. So I shall give you the choice. I am all yours if you truly mean to pursue this path. Yet I expect it will not be easy nor smooth. People talk. People judge. We may have to keep our relationship a secret and <laughs> mistress this is folly but I <laughs> I accept of course I am already yours I will be yours forever if that is your wish I cannot imagine anyone who could make me happy illuminated the shadows of my existence and breathed life into the mundane duties I once thought would define me. You made me feel worthy of something more, something beautiful. I wish for nothing more than to bask in your affection, to share moments filled with laughter and tender whispers. I shall cherish every moment we share and strive to be the companion you deserve forevermore.